What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we'll be diving into Cedars and Laravel. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. Cedars and Laravel are pretty important when it comes to generating data. You don't want to add rows inside the database manually, to create a cedar, we once again need to perform a command inside the CLI called php artisan make me something called a cedar, where we need to add one required argument, which will be the cedar class name. In our case, let's name it posts table cedar. If we hit enter, you can see that our cedar has been created successfully. And just like migrations, cedars can be found inside the database folder where you have a cedars folder. So let's close off our migrations folder and let's also close off all the tabs that we have open. Right here, you'll see our post table cedar, so let's open it. Whenever you want to interact with your database, you need to use a model, but we haven't got a post model defined. So let's also generate one quickly through the CLI. Right here, let's say PHP artisan, make me a model, which needs to be singular called post. Let's hit enter. Our model has been created successfully. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code, scroll up, open the models folder where we have our post.php class. We won't need it, but we do need the class right inside of our cedar. Now inside our cedar, you'll find one method which is called run, where the logic needs to be added whenever you want to do something with the cedar. So what I want to do right here is to obviously remove the comment and define a new variable called post and set it equal to an array. Let's go inside the array and hit enter. What my goal is with the array right here is basically defining multiple rows where we can loop over and add new rows inside the database. Keep in mind that you don't need to add the faker instance class right here because that's something for the model factory. Keep your cedars clean with real data. So let's define a new array in here and hit enter where we will define all columns inside the database with a key value pair. So let's start off with the title, which will be post number one. Then we have our excerpt as our key, which has a value of summary of post one. Then we have our body, which will be body of post one. We have our image underscore pad, which we will keep empty right now because we won't actually use the data. So let's say empty. We have our is published column, which will be false. Then we have our minutes to read, which will be two. Now let's duplicate the array that we have to find inside our post array. And let's change the values to two. And let me actually copy two and replace it for the excerpt and body. All right. Now the next step is looping over the array that we just created and perform a request to the database to insert a new row. There are two methods that you could use right here, either the query builder or eloquent. I'm a big fan of using eloquent and I know that I haven't talked about it in this course yet, but the action that we're going to perform right here will be very easy. So just follow along. Let's go right outside of our array and let's define a for each loop where we are going to loop over our posts as a key value pair. So let's say dollar sign key, the pointer with the value. The reason why we're using a key value pair is because we only need the value from our array. We don't need to do anything with the title. So let's go inside of our for each loop where we're going to call the post method that we just defined. Don't forget to pull it in. So hit enter, colon, colon, create. We do need to tell our post model what we want to create. And in our case, we need to pass in a parameter inside the create method of our value. We're almost done because we need to make sure that we tell our database seeder file, so the default database seeder that we have right here, that we want to seed our post table seeder, which can be done inside the run method of our database seeder class. Larva also adds a default method right here. Let's actually remove it because there's a way simpler method. What we're going to do is to call the global call method by saying this call. It accepts one parameter, which will be the seeder class that you want to seed. In our case, it will be posts, table, cedar. Don't forget to pull it in by hitting enter, colon, colon, class. 
Alright, we are ready to run our seeder. There are two primary ways on how you could run your seeder, and both of them need to happen inside the CLI. So let's open it. And the first method is running it with your migration, but you can also run them separately. Let's first say php artisan migrate reset to reset our migrations. Then we can run the php artisan migrate command one more time, but we're going to add a flag to it. So space double dash called seed. Let's hit enter. All right, as you can see, it has migrated all tables, but it has also seeded the post table seeder. To double check that, let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code, open our database client, refresh our tables, open the post table, and as you can see, we got two new rows inside our database. Now let's navigate back to the CLI one more time, and let's run the PHP artisan migrate reset command. Let's migrate our migrations. And whenever you already have your migrations defined and already migrated, you can simply perform the PHP artisan db colon seed command, which will run your seeds independently without a migration. So let's hit enter. Our database seeder has been completed successfully. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code, refresh it, open our post table, you still see two rows. This was it for this short video where I showed you how you could easily create seeders in Laravel. In the next video, we will dive into model factories with the Faker instance class, which allows you to create hundreds, even thousands of rows of data inside a database. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.